Hello back. We're here at the Think Bamboo podcast today and this afternoon with Bamboo Logic. We have Kiel and Hans here. You're both co-founder at uh, Bamboo Logic. We are not co-founder, but we came into the company in 2019. Yes. Okay, okay. The original co-founders had a very good idea. Uh, and then we came into the company to really structure it because the opportunity was growing. So a lot of people are in it. So then we came. And, then you go. and now it's really like taking off. It is yes. a yes, definitely. Yeah. So one of the biggest projects right now is in Portugal with a thousand hectare plantation. Two thousand. Two thousand. Yeah, yeah, we're aiming for two thousand. Whoa, okay. We're starting with 150, then we're going to go to two thousand. Okay. But we're also planting in other parts of Europe. Okay, but the biggest Not, one is Portugal right now. Yes. So that's going to be our own. I mean, what we do with other countries, we're working with farmers in other countries to basically work with them. Okay, differently. Well, I mean, it's their land. They grow okay. the, plant, the bamboo, we provide the plants, we work with them, and we'll take the offtake when it's ready. We do, the, we do the two because the only reason is we have to plant as fast as possible, mm. as much as possible bamboo in Europe. Did, so, did you hear that? We need more bamboo out there. So, uh, plant bamboo, right? Uh, indeed. Bamboo. That's it. Bamboo. Yeah. Of course, it takes a few years, and if we want to supply the European industry, we need hundred thousands of hectares. Wow. And we need the politicians to open their minds or start thinking mm -hmm. also. <laughs> That's a good remark because the consumer is already they ready. Know. They know bamboo. Yeah. The industry knows bamboo. And the politicians or the governments are the most difficult ones. And I have to say, without having any problem with them, also ecological organizations are still to be informed and it's just that it's not that they are not, uh, have no knowledge but they have no knowledge about bamboo like many people so mm. that's a big part of our mission the demystification of bamboo yeah. basically explaining the benefits and and also talking about the challenges there are some challenges but it's explaining you know that the things are sometimes a little bit over stressed and people hear stories and don't really know what goes on behind so i mean we have this discussion you know in portugal where they said well you're planting bamboo it's bad for biodiversity in fact we know that the forest that we've got which was planted five years ago yes. it's full of birds it's full of animals there's 70 endemic plants at least our first just quick quick look yeah. 70 different plants it's it's a rich forest and and hans that's we're talking about biodiversity on top of the soil now if we go below the soil microorganism that will be even amazing more. that's one of the things that we really need to look for i don't think anybody has really looked into the soil biodiversity but we know that the leaf fall is very very rich Bamboo leaves are very, very good for the soil, you know, unlike eucalyptus, for example. So if you could actually go in there and find what's there, I'm sure you find a rich, rich, rich world out there. Well, there are more micro, um, like, fungis also, bamboo yes. fungis. Yes. Yeah. We see them We see, we have mushrooms in it. We have, we have orchids. Also, you know, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah, there's all sorts. Have you thought about also going to the bamboo tea business? <laughs> Not yet. No. Not yet. Have you I tried think, it? I have tried it in, in China when I lived there. Yes, but I think here, you know, you can't do everything. Of course, um, of course. And in a way, I mean, let's be honest, our business is to plant. Yeah, and the other... We, we, we will then do the sort of pre-processing, the next step. Mm. But we're not going to be into the, the full chain. We'll do that with partnerships, with joint ventures maybe, you know. Mm -hmm. So we provide the raw material, yeah. or the semi-used material, semi-processed, and, and then yeah. they can do the next. That's yeah. what you focus on your USB. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Are, I think there are a few trends that, that, that are an advantage at this moment for bamboo. Mm -hmm. The whole of Europe is turning to bio-based, local is also the new global, so in that sense uh, everything is there for the bamboo story in Europe yeah. with all the advantages, but you have to yeah. do it like it has to be done. It's an agricultural crop, it's not forestry. In other parts of the world, it's forestry, so that's one yeah. big difference with mm. Europe. Mm. And uh, for the rest of the story, in terms of processing, I don't think we have to compete uh, for everything with, for example, Asia. Of course, there that's are things that we can do level. better in Europe. There are things yeah. that they can do better in Asia. But uh, there was, like, if I recall this correctly, you have like a fabric or something set up in Portugal. 
we are setting up <laughs> a setting up. Procession, uh, pro processing, processing plant. Yes, in, yes. Uh, yeah. And in Belgium, we have the luck that we can do a lot of tests in an old furniture factory. Mm. There you have the dry ovens, you have all kinds Amazing. of machines. So you can do all the research, yes. uh, research and development yeah. there on, on site. Yeah. Awesome. But I mean, if you think of fabric as in, in, in textile, we're working with a company that's actually producing bamboo textile yes. in Portugal. Yes. Um, at yeah. the moment, the pulp comes from the other side of the world. Yeah, I've, I've done so, a mini podcast with them. All right, it's you know, not yet live, but because that's that's yeah. what we and we're talking with her, with with her, with them, mm -hmm. and the universities to to basically develop. Well, we don't have to develop; it exists. But to get a proper process for ecological pulp, mm -hmm. so we can actually say, look, this is really sustainable. This is ecological. We know it can be done. It's just cranking it up to industrial level and and be transparent also about what is being measured and etc et there is no other way to go in europe because of all the regulation all products in the future you know the lcas everything should be transparent and what hans explains is not only for the fabrics but in fact our principle for each product mm. we also wood applications yes True. we will do them but then bio-based glues uh, and That's, so it's done with, with lichen, I think, this one. We have it? some with lignin, which is in the bamboo. So it's basically using the bamboo glue, as it were. You know, the also. stuff that we get out of the bamboo and glue it with that. This instead of using some some other like glue that is yeah. not ecological. This is interesting. Sure. It's the same approach like Nestle, which is using sugar from the cacao mm -hmm. fruit instead of using yes. like other sugar and then pouring it into the chocolate. Right. This one is glued with potatoes. Oh. Potato oh. proteins. Potato. Wow. Potato starch. And it looks it looks strong. <laughs> wow. Mosso from Portugal, maybe. <laughs> that is uh, it's our own, our own, plant, our own bamboo. Wow, yeah. beautiful! Oh, and it's really, it's really beautiful. I mean, I don't know if we can see it. Yes. So but within that principle, mm -hmm. bio-based, completely European, we are now designing with the Artis University in the Netherlands a complete garden set because there you have the wood. You know, for the chairs, mm -hmm. you use the composite bamboo composite for the inside of the chairs, mm -hmm. and then the textile for. Uh, the sheds or the, the parasols. So there's going to be a, like a full line of products then? It's one garden set, completely European, completely mm. bio-based. It's for showcase. Of course, the prototype. Or it should yeah. be ready before the end of the year. Awesome. But as I say, we're developing that with Art University. Yeah. You know, Art AZ, good which is a university. Yeah. So we get all these young, these young geeks looking at you know, cool. what's the best way, awesome. testing, coming up with new designs. Really yeah. nice. Yeah. And I think that's, that's the other great thing. You know, bamboo in Europe, it's, it's a product of the future. So we're talking Absolutely. with... with Young designers with, <laughs> with, with young architects. Sorry. Fabulous. Let's turn around. Yes. Yeah. We're still yeah. there. Yeah, we're still there. We have the logo there. <laughs> yeah, so this is really a thing. Bamboo is the future. We know that. We have to invest time and money because uh, yeah. there is a lot. We know that bamboo grows in Europe. We know the industry needs bamboo. And now the work is everything in between. In between. I think just one, one last point. Because people say, well, bamboo in Europe, you know, is it really good for the environment? It's very good for, as we said earlier, biodiversity and soil conservation. I would agree, though, that I wouldn't necessarily want to plant bamboo in a nature reserve or in a, you know, a protected area. It's not a European plant. We use it as a crop. We're working with the Minister of Agriculture. Basically, that's how it should be used in Europe. And there is a lot of degraded, not used land. If we can help to make some of that green, exactly. rich, exactly. productive, create a job, <laughs> and get us out of the dependence of other countries. For example. <laughs> and another exactly. important point, as you know, everywhere in the world, I think, but certainly in Europe, farmers are completely in stress. They are yeah. like in the, completely in the food sector, they don't get the prices they want so we give them also an alternative to be again or play a role uh, to deliver the industry with an alternative uh, product that's rewarding and have a future which, yeah. which is valuable so sustainable yeah. business model absolutely
so with eventually even opportunities for ecotourism. You know, we talked to some people here who said, look, we, we're planting bamboo because we're thinking of having a little bed and breakfast, guest house, you know, and people can sit in a green environment. Yeah. So that's another... Green, one. fresh, healthy, relaxing. Yeah. I mean, what's better, what right? one? Yes. Yeah, what's better? And you, know, you know, sitting in between bamboo, you know it, it's a special experience. It's super relaxing. Not it's it's been been it's relaxing. Your, uh, it really is. Yeah. yeah. So, Fantastic. So, so, a nice thing about them. Uh, uh, they're just almost just nice things about bamboo, but it, it, they need. The it's whole. not, as you know, wonders so, down the No, no, no. It's not a silver bullet. Yeah, yeah, it's a fantastic no, no. plant, but there's a lot of work to be done still. A lot of research. The communication, and, and being transparent, and really understanding what this giant grass is and what it can and what it does in Europe and what also it, yeah. because there's a lot of data, there's a lot of research but it's all non-European so that's also a part of the role and a part of our responsibility I think to do it in a series but the interesting thing is we have the perception that bamboo is something high-end something luxurious and of course where bamboo grows they have the perception that bamboo is the poor man's timber so we have a different um, situation but still it's very challenging. Yes. True, true, true. Yeah. Uh, so it's still interesting. <laughs> the one way or the other. Yeah, the base of the bamboo story is that one exceptional fiber. You know the fiber with exceptional mechanical properties? That's actually the base of every bamboo story. The fiber. Yeah. Yeah, no, and it's... I mean, and you guys have been advancing very fast, so I hope you continue. I hope do we? I hope do we? Keep going. And uh, we'll be talking. Very surely, surely. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, guys. Bye. Thank you, JJ. Ciao.